Okay, in this video, I want to start our sort of topic on hydraulic systems. So in the next few videos, we're going to be looking at hydraulic systems and fluid mechanics and some practical applications and examples. But before we get into that, we need to kind of understand the underlying principle inside of hydraulic systems and how they kind of work. And that principle is known as Pascal's principle uh, specifically for hydraulic systems. So the principle kind of states, and this is kind of my own wording of this principle, is that in an enclosed system that contains static fluid, increasing the pressure at any one point in the system will increase the pressure at all points in the liquid. Now, this kind of makes sense, right? Because up to this point, we've been studying something called hydrostatic pressure, and we have this equation which is P equals P naught plus rho G H or rho G D, uh, depending on you know what variable you want to use. And really this equation gives us this pressure value inside of a container at any depth H, given that we have some sort of initial pressure, we know the mass density of the liquid in the container, and we have our gravitational constant, right? So as a quick reminder, if we wanted to figure out what the pressure was at the very bottom of this container, we would simply look at this p naught value, which is the pressure from where we're taking H. In this case, it's gonna be at the very top, which is open to the atmosphere. So in this case, p naught is going to be one ATM. And then we're going to add to that the mass density of the liquid times the gravitational constant times H. And H is really the distance from P naught all the way down to the point that we're studying, in this case, the very, very bottom. In using this equation, we can figure out the pressure at any point in this container, right? So if we wanted to figure out what the pressure was here uh, at this sort of line right there. And I could say that is, you know, H over two, so kind of halfway uh, in the depth of this container. Then the pressure there, which I'll just call PM for middle, so PM would equal P naught plus rho G, and then our depth would be H over two, right? We're just taking the pressure, or we wanna figure out what the pressure is halfway down inside of this container. So right here along that line. Now, as you know, the pressure in the container varies depending on H, right? How deep you go down into the container. So really, there's pressure everywhere inside of this container. There's pressure here at the bottom. There's pressures on the side. There's pressures at the top of the container uh, and all around. So anywhere in this container, there is some sort of pressure. And the deeper you go down into this container, the higher the pressure will become. Now remember, this principle states that inside of this enclosed system, that if we increase the pressure anywhere in the system, then all of these pressures all over the liquid inside of this container will increase by that pressure, right? And that kind of makes sense if we look at this equation. If we increase P naught anywhere, then the resulting pressure anywhere inside of this container will increase. So right now we're assuming that at the very top of this container, our P naught really is just open to the atmosphere. So in this particular case, it's equal to one ATM. But let's say instead of having that container open to the atmosphere, instead what we did was we applied some kind of a piston or some kind of a cap here at the top and we started pushing down on that piston with some sort of force, right? So this force is going down. What if we increased P naught simply by two or by three? So now this equation now becomes pressure at any point in the container is now twice as much of P naught plus rho G H. And because this equation gives us the pressure at any depth of H inside of this container, if we increase the initial pressure by two, then this pressure is obviously going to increase, right? We upped this term by a factor of two, so the total pressure is going to increase all throughout this container. 
And again, remember, this increase in pressure here applies to all pressure points inside of this container. So again, if we wanted to figure out what the pressure was, let's say, halfway here, right, which I'll call P middle, then our P middle, the pressure at the middle of the container, is going to be 2 P naught, right? That's still going to stay the same because we've increased this pressure by a factor of 2, the initial pressure, plus rho G H. In this case, H is now H over 2, right? Just halfway from this point all the way down to the middle of the container, right? So this is our new H or our new, sorry, D, right? Okay, so now that we kind of understand this Pascal's principle, this is actually used in a lot of different applications. One in particular is the hydraulic press principle. And what this principle states is that we can actually increase the force inside of this container by some multiple based off of increasing the initial force anywhere in the container. In other words, applying a small amount of force to a small area at one state of the fluid can dramatically increase the force that's being applied over some larger area somewhere else in the container. And this is a really cool principle because we use this concept to create things like the hydraulic lift, which is used to like lift cars up from the ground. And it's also used in your brake system in your car. So you can apply uh, some kind of a force to your brake pedal. And that force is transmitted into the brake fluid, which is static. And that force is now being applied to all four brakes in each of the different wheels in your car. So we'll talk about this hydraulic press principle in the next video with some numerical examples to really understand it. So see you then.